What's going on guys, another NBA video today, top 10 for you, my all-time power forwards top 10. Let's get into it. At number 10, a current player that I think when he retires is going to have, he's already got one championship, I think he will have possibly three or four. He's still very young, um, he's already a leader in his team. As I said, I think he will retire with probably a minimum of, of at least two. Um, but I think he'll get between three to five in, in the end when he hangs it up. And that is Giannis Antetokounmpo. Just a prominent figure in his team. Uh, he's got that presence. He's massive like in terms of height. He must weigh a ton as well. But he's so athletic for a guy his size. Can shoot from distance. He's proved that in his game um, and improved it a lot. But he just gets to the basket easy. It's hard stopping him getting to the basket. He's very athletic for someone his size. Already won a championship, but he's still very young. And I think that he's got that natural leadership quality as well. So for me, he's he's really interesting to watch. He's not my one of my favourites, but I respect him. And there's a few on this list that... Well, a lot of them on this list I wouldn't have as my favourites, but I've put them on it out of sheer respect and what they've achieved and, and what they're achieving. So number 10, Yanis Antetokounmpo. Number nine is a perfect example of someone that I don't particularly like as a person or even as an athlete that much, but I respect what they're doing because they this guy has, himself has won, I think, three or four trophies already and he's still currently going, but I just don't like him. But I have to put respect on what he's doing because he's he's proving that he can win win titles and that is Draymond Green. I can't stand him, if I'm honest, but I think he's been carried a bit with Steph and Clay at the Warriors, but at the same time, he does defensive duties that them two won't. They balance each other out, them three, in terms of, said, Steph, he's not a terrible defender, but him and Clay aren't defenders like Draymond is, and Draymond will get in people's skin under their skin, wind them up, rile them up. Um, I don't particularly like it, but it works and it's effective, so that's why I've put him on the list. As I said, he's won three or four championships already. That's why he's made my list. Draymond Green, number nine. Number eight, Pau Gasol. I was very nurtured heavily by Kobe um, at the Lakers. And I know he was heavy on him. Kobe was heavy on Pau when they played together because he just wanted him to keep improving and get to the heights that he did with him and win championships with him because he knew he could always get better. And Pau was probably a little bit more laid back and, and Kobe really got under him and and kind of pestered him to the point that he probably wanted to fight him at times. But it brought the best out of Pau and Pau ended up winning with Kobe at the Lakers because of that. Um, if Kobe hadn't pushed him as far, I don't think Pau would have been the, the player that he... And people remember him as and he was a great player. Always like technically very good for a big guy. Scored a lot of points. Good rebounder. Strong. Um, difficult to deal with, wiry, and like I said, he had good fundamentals, good talent, and, and I think Kobe improved him with the pressure he put on him to, to become even better. So, Pau Gasol, number eight. Number seven, Chris Bosch. Another one that I wasn't, like, he's not one of my favourites to watch, but I always thought he was a great player for whatever team he was at, especially for Toronto over the years, because they never won anything while he was there. But he was always that leader for them and they did reasonably well with under-talented squads with him leading the front. Um, and obviously he did eventually win it with the Heat when he moved there with uh, with LeBron, Wade and Allen. Eventually got his hands on that championship. But I think he was just, he had a great career. He was good for the American team as well in the Olympics and things. Um, and just had a really underrated career, I think. And probably should have won more titles, if I'm honest. But I don't think it was for lack of talent. It was just kind of the teams he was in and... Um, didn't have the best players around him a lot. So, Chris Bosch, number seven. Number six, Kevin Garnett. Again, not a massive fan of him. I think he, he he's a little bit like Draymond was, but I think he was more talented and had more to his game than Draymond has. But it's that loudmouth side of it that I don't particularly enjoy or like. But that is just who Kevin Garnett is. Like, you see him now and he does, like, podcasts and things and has a YouTube channel and stuff, but which I quite enjoy watching, but he still annoys me to this day when I watch him when he's so, like, loud and, like, in your face with stuff. I've never enjoyed that with him, but I respect his game and I respect what he did. Similar to Bosch with the teams he was at, especially in Minnesota for all them years, 
should have won more titles than, um, than he did. Obviously, he got his hands on it eventually at the Celtics. Um, but definitely another one that should have won more over his career. But it wasn't for lack of talent again and lack of ability because he had it in abundance. I just wasn't a fan of his his personality. That's all. Number six, Kevin Garnett. Number five, Charles Barkley. This guy was just a brute force, driving to the basket. He was pretty quick for someone his size, explosive for someone his size. He won a championship, which is shocking, really. Come close to it with the Suns when they made the finals. Lost out to the Bulls, um, which I'm not arguing with because I'm a Chicago Bulls fan. But he was the leader of that team. Probably should have won it at some point. I think he deserved to win it at some point. He was definitely talented enough, but just whether it was luck or teammates and teams he was in. Didn't quite reach the peak. But he's definitely respected as legends, even though he didn't win it. He's respected like he did because he was that good of a player. Charles Barkley, number five. Number four, the mailman, Carl Malone. Should have won it with the with the Jazz at some point. Obviously lost out to the Bulls as well. But I think they were favourites that year. And he was one of the leading scorers, I think, still to this day in history. He's like up in the top 10, I believe, um, and held the record for quite a while in terms of points scored. Ferocious, strong, scored buckets and got crazy nights of points. Um, and obviously had that, that partnership with John Stockton, the pick and roll. Um, he was a great player. I think he should have won something, though. Um, another one that was a little bit wasted in terms of when they retire, looking back on, on what they achieved. They'd be disappointed. He was definitely talented enough to, to do more. Carl Malone, the mailman, number four. Number three, one of my favourites, um, as a big man especially, Dirk Nowitzki. Won a title with the Dallas Mavericks after a few letdowns in finals and getting close to it in the past. Eventually won it with Jason Terry, Harry, Sean Marion, others to name as well. But he was the leader of that team. It was so monumental in them winning that when they won it. And I was just a massive fan of him. He made that fadeaway shot like even more popular for a big especially. He it was very elegant for a big, I thought. Um, that's why he's one of my favourites, because he looked like he had swag and style without trying to. It was just his natural game. I think he deserved to win more than one title, but unfortunately he only won the one, but at least he did get his hands on it. Just a great representative for the NBA over the years as well. Had a long career, and again, another one like Barkley that... Although he did win a title and Barkley didn't, that he's respected heavily. And I, I don't always feel like he gets the love some of the others on this list to get. And I don't quite understand that because I think he was such a good player. Like, good's not even a word. I think he was better than good. Um, and like I said, that fadeaway shot he had, unstoppable on his day. Dirk Nowitzki, number three. Number two, I found it hard to, to put him... Not one, but I put him as number two in the end, but he could easily be number one. But it's Dennis Rodman. The guy got a lot of hate for his career, probably still does to this day, because he's different. He's not scared to be different. He dresses different. He looks different. Had that hair, the different hair colours when he was playing, obviously. On and off the court stuff when he was playing for the Bulls and just a troubled individual at times. But at the same time, probably misunderstood. But what a defender. If we're talking just defend, pure defending and just willing to die out on that court, he would be number one easy. But I'm just doing it in terms of respect, in terms of what they won, what they achieved. Um, and he could still be number one on that. I had to separate it, but it, was, it wasn't easy. But just sheer defending and, and putting your life on the line on the, on the court and willing to die out there, he'd be the GOAT for me. Best rebounder ever in basketball for me. I don't think the Bulls would be and um, go on to win what they did without him involved. He was that third cog after Jordan and Pippen. He was so monumental to them Bulls teams and what he did. Rocky career, but one that was hugely successful at the same time. And I think he deserves more respect than he gets. A lot of people don't know how to handle him and judge him and deal with him. But I think he deserves huge credit. The best defender I've ever seen in the NBA. Dennis Rodman, number two. And then at number one, Tim Duncan. He had great fundamentals for a big. He was never agile, but he was clever. Clever with his footwork, clever with his positioning, knowing where to be on the court. Easy shots in terms of conversion rate. He was so clever knowing where to be and would master that and as well. Great shooter, good free throw shooter. 
decent rebounder offensively and defensively. Um, the only thing I would criticise him for is that he wasn't the loudest, but he didn't need to be because he still won numerous things with the Spurs, was a leader at the Spurs, along with the likes of great players like Ginobili, the likes of Parker, the likes of a Bowen even, under Popovich, great tutelage. And I know that he's quite a different character off the court as well to a lot of people like Rodman was as well. Not to the extremes Rodman was, but in a different way. A very quiet guy, but one that commands respect when he walks into a room because of his career and what he achieved. You don't have to be a loud mouth to go and achieve things. And I think a lot more people need to understand that in whatever field in life you're talking about, because it doesn't mean you're tough just because you're a loud mouth. A lot of the time it's the opposite. And this guy was a quiet assassin in terms of fundamentals were just polished to a, to a T, worked on it consistently and won a lot with the Spurs and, de and deservedly so. So a lot of people don't like him because they think he's boring and wasn't the most explosive or agile of a, of a big, but his record speaks for itself. He won numerous titles. He's one of the greats. And that is why I've got him at number one because I respect his game that much. It's not about personality all the time. It's about what you achieved and your trophies and your numbers and just your stamp on the game you left and for me it was hard to separate him and Rodman but I went with Duncan number one Tim Duncan that's my all-time top 10 power forwards guys a lot of you that follow me are footballers or football fans which I love and you're, you're welcome I appreciate the support but basketball fans you're welcome too let me know in the comments your list it'd be interesting to see who we have the same in the same positions and maybe you've got names I haven't got on my list. So let me know in the comments, guys. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you soon.